Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Phil Lichtenberger, a scanner radio hobbyist of a fast-growing niche website, scannerschool.com, an educational website dedicated to instructing scanner radio hobbyists via tutorials, podcasts, reviews, and more. Although not a domain investor, Today, Phil and I discuss lessons learned about the importance of selecting a domain that passes the radio test, no pun intended. So with that, Phil, welcome, and thank you for making time to join us today. Thanks for having me, Alvin. I'm I'm happy to be here. Good, good deal. So to kick things off, uh, tell the listeners a bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do. Okay. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. Um, I am an amateur radio operator, so my call sign for there is W2. L-I-E. And uh, that is kind of the gateway as to how I got into what I'm doing now. Um, I live on Long Island, New York, and I got my first taste of, I guess, building websites back in the old AOL days when everybody had their own personal page. And I used to do all that for uh, friends of mine who were in, you know, in, in my college dorm and we post our pictures online. Um, and then eventually, you know, a couple of years later, after I got married and whatnot, I, I, um, started my own little hobby site and, uh, that leads me to where I am today and here talking to you. <laughs> so that's me in a nutshell. Wow. So, so share with our listeners then, cause I know scanner radio, obviously when I think of scanner radio, I had aunts and uncles mm-hmm. growing up that would, uh, have scanners, you know, sitting there. And so it's sometimes one of those things. So if you would hear the, I guess you'd say the latest and greatest, not that it was good news in most cases, but you'd hear the news come across the scanner, um, obviously before sometimes the news stations, radio stations themselves. And so how did you get introduced into scanner radio? That's thankfully something that my father had passed on to me. Uh, he was in the radio world as well. He, uh, was into CBs when at the time here you needed, you know, back in the, in the seventies, we need a license to get on CB and it wasn't really the, um, uh, the circus that it kind of grew into after, after, um, you know, after a while. And, uh, he got into amateur radio as well. And I always remember growing up, maybe even before I can walk there being a scanner somewhere in the house, whether it was at my parents' house growing up or even at my grandparents' house, um, there was always a radio around. I remember playing around on the floor with my cousins at my grandparents and just having their radio on in the kitchen. And even my uncle, he grabbed the bug as well. So it was kind of became a kind of a family thing. We all kind of fell in love with being able to hear what was going on, not only, you know, on, on police or fire or just even local government stuff, but being able to be on the other side of the microphone uh, and getting our amateur radio licenses and making a difference where we would volunteer for the local marathons or volunteer for the, um, the local, um, like it's the amateur radio emergency services or, or those kinds of things. I actually became uh, a couple of positions, uh, leadership positions within those. I was um, part of the leadership role with the local, uh, what they call RACES, which is the radio amateur civil emergency services, uh, Aries, which is the amateur radio emergency services, and also the national traffic system. So I, I held quite a bit of a leadership roles when it came to amateur radio, but really my, uh, my main love when it comes to radio stuff is just being on the listening side and, and hearing what's going on and, and uh, just taking a listening role when it comes to what's going on on, on uh, the radio world. Wow. So well versed then in terms of uh, the radio world. So, I mean, in terms of the, I guess the hobbyist um, side of this, how large or small is this niche? That's, that's a weird question. Not, not to say it's a weird question. That's, it's an interesting (laughs) one because I don't think there's really a good way to put a number on it. Um, It's, it's like what you said on, on the intro, right? You remember growing up and and having one with uh, when you were growing up, but is, is somebody who listens to just their local police station part of the hobby because they just want to listen to, you know, what's going on. Cause you got, remember you got people who just have the radio on to listen to loved ones. So maybe their, um, their father or their spouse or somebody they, they, you know, in their family is a firefighter or a police officer. 
and they just want to keep ears on what's going on to make sure that everything is safe and nothing is going on. Um, you know, so are they considered a scanner radio hobbyist or user, or, um, I guess another way to flip it is most people drive a car, but does that make them a professional driver the same way that somebody who drives for a limo company or Uber would be a professional driver or somebody who has a CDL or somebody who's in a sports cars, you know, are they a professional driver? So, um, I would have to say my best guess would be the number would probably be larger than, uh, you'd figure, <laughs> I guess is a good way to say it. <laughs> no, but again, no, no. there's, there's, there's different, you know, there's different, uh, with any hobby, right. It's, 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 it's really how involved are most people when it comes to the hobby, I guess would be, you know, a way to look at it. But it, again, it's, it's gotta be a lot. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's something that I didn't think about just in terms of, you know, you have listeners, but then you have actually active, I guess you'd say participants in, in, um, you know, in terms of literally kind of what you do. Um, and so, I mean, you know, kind of walk us through, I guess, what led to you, cause you mentioned that you had an amateur call sign. So, and that you launched, I guess, a website from that. So kind of what led up to, to that. Okay. So, um, I, I guess it was around 2005, there was a local individual here who ran a scanner radio website and he was kind of the resource. And actually his website is the Long Island scanning resource is what he called it. And even if you do a Google to this day, he'll still come up most of the time before me. And he's got a pile of frequencies and he used to run a forum where you'd be able to go and say, Hey, what, you know, so-and-so department moved. Does anybody have a latest update? Or, or he had, um, you know, a list of, of the codes that the police departments and fire departments used on his site. And what ended up happening was he was running an old bulletin board. I guess it was a uh, YABB or YAB, I guess, whatever you call it. And it had a major security vulnerability to it. And unfortunately, somebody decided that it was an easy target and nailed him three times. And he went three strikes, I'm out, I give up. He kept the static stuff going. So the frequencies and, um, you know, the, 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 the codes and, and that kind of stuff, the core information he left on and, and hasn't really, um, he hasn't changed it since 2005. It's still the old information up there. But again, he ranks really well. Um, so what ended up happening was after he gave up and, and the announcement went up, you know, when you went to his site, you went to the forum, it was just a splash page, you know, thanks for the years of service, but I'm done. So I emailed him directly. I said, you know, I'm really sorry to see you go that you, it's really, you're leaving a, a huge hole in the scanner community here. Do you mind if I step in and I don't want to step on your toes, but do you mind if I create my own site where people who are looking to gain more information about the scanner reader community can come to? And he said, it's not a problem that if there's anything that I had that was archived from his original bulletin board, that I was free to use it, which is really nice of him. Uh, at the same time, though, there was a couple other niche sites that were popping up because at this point, right, bulletin boards were big. We were talking about 2005, not really bulletin boards, but forums. So there were a couple of other uh, fire department related um, niche sites, and they had loads of traction there. And I was I wouldn't say competing with them, but a lot of the users that would have been on my site just gravitated to those sites. So for a long time, I was ended up um, really partnering with the owner of those other two uh, fire department related sites to kind of work with him and share information with him just to try and uh, keep, you know, an open line of communications. And we worked on a couple of projects and I think we had a good relationship going back and forth with, uh, which really helped keep my site floating for a while. Um, so what I ended up doing was in order to get people really onto my site and, and to give them the drawer, what I did was I put one of my radios, my scanners online. And this was again, 2005, the days before really the iPhone even came out. Maybe the iPhone was just coming out around that time. And nobody really had that yet. I mean, right now you have a smartphone, you can download a couple of scanner, uh, scanner apps that will allow you to listen to um, scanner radios all over the country and almost all over the world. But again, when I first started doing it, this was very unique and there wasn't a lot of people doing it. So when I put my local County online, it was always sudden I was getting flooded with users. So even though they were kind of posting on the other site, they were still coming to me to listen. And what I did was in my infinite wisdom at the time, I used my amateur radio call sign because to me, W2LIE uh, was kind of easy to remember. 
um, thinking only personally, not really learning what I know now and, and, and going out there and putting feelers out there and seeing what would actually work. Um, so I, I, I purchased the domain W two L I E dot net. And the reason why I went with a dot net was because I had understood that the dot com was for commercial websites and I was running this as a hobby. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm not commercial. I have an amateur radio call sign. You're really not supposed to um, make money being an amateur radio. It's, it's a hobby. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a hobby. And it's um, um, really not something you're supposed to get paid for. So I went with the .NET to try and keep things on the up and up. And, um, you know, it, that was kind of mistake number two. So it ended up being that <laughs> for some reason, people could not remember w2lie.net and I, even though when i had my original call sign i paid to have my call as a vanity call and i went with that vanity call because everybody where i'm from on long island understands that lie stands for the long island expressway and when you say i'm on the lie it's it's kind of an acronym that's very close to everybody who lives on long island uh -huh. so me thinking that you know First of all, my vanity call sign. And as soon as I say that call sign, when I'm over the air, people immediately go, oh, Long Island Expressway, great call. And even when I jump on to like the HF bands, which allow me to talk across the world, even if I'm talking to somebody out of state and I give the call sign W2LIE, they immediately go, oh, Long Island Expressway, how are you doing? But for some reason, everybody outside the amateur radio world is, on, is I wouldn't say is unable to, but they don't instinctively make that connection. <laughs> right because i think when i looked at it it was like w2 lie i was like well i guess are you lying about your w2 form or you know it didn't it didn't register with me um until you actually said oh, no it's my you know amateur radio call sign i'm like oh okay it's funny you actually said this there's actually a band called dream theater and uh long island bass too and one of their songs is called lie but they do the exact same thing, L I E. So it's kind of these things that people go, "No, it's Long Island Expressway." That's the name of the song, and and you know they're like, "No, it's it's called Lie." So it's kind of <laughs> kind of the same thing. But, that is um, funny. I, I actually have people that are like, "Oh yeah, you know what, what's this? What's the name of the site? Why to Lie? Or is it?" Uh, and I'm like, "You know what? This is really just getting out of hand. It's it's um, you know." So I had two strikes really on my domain name, and 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 in practice, I had three strikes against me on this one because I wasn't gaining an email list when I did it as well. So if I ever made any changes and I do have changes actually in place right now that I'm working on, um, I, I wasn't really collecting an email list. What I was doing was I was getting people to sign up for my website so that they would have access to the links to listen to the live scanner feeds. And so I was able to really gain a membership of 10,000 people but they weren't active participants in the website. They were just there really to get the link and then move on. So you can imagine that if I had said, Hey, give me your email list and I will give you the scanner feed. I'd have 10,000 people I could sell to. So, oh, right, right. you know, and 10,000 people I could reach out to and say, Hey, uh, I'm changing the name of my domain name. I, I can't do that now. I can't, I mean, I can go into my website and just send out a bulk email, but they didn't really subscribe to it. So it's kind of one of those areas that you, you don't want to get into. <laughs> so, um, and then on top of it too, you know, I have a, a Twitter stream that was going on with it too, that I was very active with and a Facebook page. And, uh, you know, now we not, we kind of know the differences at least at this time between Facebook pages and Facebook groups and how Facebook likes to rank either one of them. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of one of these things I'm, you know, it's, it's 2005 when I started, I'm still, I still got the domain going. I still have the website there. Uh, it's still active, but it's really is a monster to move at this time to change the domain name and get everybody involved and, and whatnot. So there was, um, quite a bit of lessons learned on that front. Uh, but the interesting too is, is I know, um, you kind of want to get into where I'm going with the domain names and whatnot. Um, I decided that, okay, .net's not working for me. So I went on to, I guess it was GoDaddy, whoever it was I was using at the time. It was one-on-one, -on -one, which I know will make a lot of listeners cringe as well. Um, and I tried to register the .com name. It was gone. Somebody already sni uh, sniped it on me. <laughs> hey, so was it available at the time, though, when you actually registered the original .net? Yeah. 
Okay, but you didn't purchase it then because obviously, as you stated, you were like, well, I'm not supposed to, it's amateur, so I'm not really, I guess, qualified. In your mind, you thought I wasn't qualified to actually register the .com um, at that time. So you just registered the .net. So fast forward back to where you're at and you then discover, so I mean, how many years had passed before you had, you know, went, hey, I want the .com? You know what? That's now. Now I'm thinking about it. So what happened was I, w- I was originally hosted on one and one and one, I guess it was, and quickly outgrew that platform. So I moved over to somebody else. So it would at least be a year beyond when I first started, because um, I, I know I outgrew their shared server at one on one. I moved over to another company and I registered the dot com with a secondary company through their portal. So it would at least be about a year since I tried to get it. So. Um, Maybe it took two years for me to actually get the dot com name. Wow. So did you contact the the previous owner or was no. it just one of those? <laughs> I, I kind of waited it out. Yeah, I waited it out to make sure that, you know, I can get the best price. So I, and I was had, anything on there during that time, like developed on that dot com? No. Nope. It was just somebody who just squatted the name because I guess they figured that the dot net was was purchased and um, the dot com wasn't. So I guess they just squatted on the name, figuring that I'd want it eventually, which I did. And <laughs> I paid a top dollar for it, which I didn't. Right. So, and so, that, so it's an interesting lesson there in terms of, you know, because we talk about, um, in, at least in the domain industry and what I try to teach um, to you know, just business owners in general and those in business that are launching their websites is about the the radio test. So, you know, your customers or your visitors should be able to uh, remember your domain without uh, misspelling it um, while hearing it on, you know, the radio or seeing it in a TV ad. And so it's one of those things like when I saw your W2 LIE and we discussed it, you know, I was like, wow. And then you, you know, you alluded to the fact that even though you were, you know, it was Long Island Express, you actually could see kind of the error there in the decision of moving forward, you know, one with the .NET without the .com. Uh, But then, you know, with a, I guess you'd say a a, uh, somewhat difficult domain to remember outside of the Long Island area. And so that's just an interesting thing. Now, once you got the dot com in your in your possession, did you notice any? Obviously, you're redirecting it to your dot net. Did you notice a shift in anything in terms of your traffic or usage going up, or is it been more of a defensive registration? You know, I, I'm I, I, at that time I wasn't really big into the analytics, but the one thing I do notice was that I was starting to get emails that probably would have bounced. A lot of people were emailing me, dot com. And, you know, of course, I had to redirect straight from dot com to dot net. So, yeah, that was one of the things I noticed right away was always so now I'm getting emails. <laughs> so, wow. And what type what type of uh, emails were you receiving? It was just like pers- people who knew me. So it was just, hey, can you look at this? Or, uh, you know, it was just a follow up from the meeting we had last week, those kinds of personal emails. So it would have been something that somebody would have sent me and they probably would have gotten the bounce message and then they would have resent it to me correctly. But, um, but yeah, I started noticing a lot of people were just using the dot com instinctively and not the dot net. So that wow. was one of those other things. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of strange little lessons on that one. <laughs> wow. And had you been run, likely been running a business, you know, it's like, you look at that and you go, man, I'm missing orders possibly, you know, because of someone in, inadvertently typing dot com when, you know, your presence is on dot net and you don't own the dot com. Right. Or even, even like, there's people who buy the dot coms who don't buy the dot nets. And just as what you're saying, there's people who will buy the business name under a dot net, thinking that, well, the dot com is taken, I'll just go for the dot net, not realizing that now they're giving the orders to somebody else. Wow. Wow. So, yep. Yeah, but, uh, but like you said with the radio test, I, I did go out and I did sit down and, and start figuring out well, what would people be looking for in Google? as far as keywords. So I started registering keywords and repointing them to my domain, thinking that that might help. And again, I wasn't really big in analytics. It was more like a, um, I just didn't want competition. Right. You know, at, at this point when, um, uh, around 2010, the County next me changed things up a bit. So I, I originally was starting with a, um, uh, to back up a couple of years on this one, 
I was doing a scanner programming service. So if somebody needed to have a scanner programmed, I all of a sudden became the, the go-to guy to have this done. And every weekend I'd have a couple of different people's radios on my desk and, and I sit there and I'd program them for them. Um, I've learned over time how to streamline that process, thankfully. And, um, in 2010, my neighboring County changed up their system. So my programming side of the house exploded. So now I have a hobby site that's making income. So now it was really important for me to say, okay, you know, I, I've, I got to start thinking about, um, you know, Right, changing so it's not really a, a .com or it is a .com now. Um, and then my customers were asking me to purchase hardware from me. So that became the start of my S Corp. So <laughs> it took me, took me five years to kind of get out of the hobby mindset and into um, the business frame of actually now selling hardware to customers because I was losing them, right? They, they'd come to me and say, hey, can you program this radio for me? And I'd say, no, I'm sorry. You know, it's too old. It won't work on the new system. If you want, go ahead and you can buy this one. And I'd never see them again. And this was before my days of affiliate marketing was really even, you know, a blip on the radar. Again, all these little things that that now you kind of um, that that you're, that you're tuned into and that are a little bit more accessible these days. It would have been great if I had gotten onto that when things were first starting. You know, <laughs> place right now. Twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. Not, not to say I didn't do well with Google Ads while they had me on the on the system before they tossed me off, but um, but yeah, um, a lot of lessons learned when it comes to to starting a hobby site and and going with a .net first of all and a, and a domain name that that people have a hard time remembering. <laughs> so. Right. So now, now what's interesting because I want to back up to to something that you stated there. So. In your possession today, I mean, obviously you have uh, w2lie.com, uh, you have the .net as well, and that site's on uh, your primary, I guess your, what was your primary uh, website, and then you also have scannerschool.com. Now, you mentioned that you registered other domains, so do you still own those domains, and are you still redirecting them uh, to either site? Yes and no. So what I've done is I've kind of segmented where I've gone with things. So I still have w2lie.net and .com and .org and .us. And now we got the phone ringing in the background. Um, you want to hold okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> It'll be done in two more. <laughs> no, that's all right. You can keep going. All right. Um, so I have w2lie.net, .com dot org dot yeah. us dot moby right I, I went after everything um i have a couple of keyword sites like scan long island or long island scan maybe not just scan long island i think it's the one i own because i figured that was something that would be a keyword thing um and then i have my s corp name which is monitor long island and uh at the point where i'm at now monitor long island was really just a landing page just to kind of announce my services um, I've also then broken down the business again, where I was selling pagers and I was having a problem with WooCommerce, having both affiliates and a shopping cart for physical products. So I spun that off into eastcoastpagers.com as a DBA to kind of make the web, uh, make that site not so localized because I ran into that problem as well. Um, what else did I do with that one? But again, I, I try and go after everything now. So if I go out and I register a domain, I'm grabbing at least the top three, .com, .net, .org. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of take that as a lesson. And then, yeah, so I also own, uh, with my latest, newest project, I went with scannerschool.com because I figured that having a domain name like that would really um, let people understand immediately when they're looking at that domain name, what it is, as opposed to going to monitor Long Island and then going into my courses or my podcast from there. Because again, that kind of um, domain name localizes myself and I didn't want to be localized when it came to, to something like a podcast. Well, so then, so are you now, I know that you said it, you know, like East Coast uh, pagers. So are you primarily hand registering? So going out, you know, to like a godaddy.com, just entering in the domain and then, like you said, buying the .com, .net, .org, or are you also finding domains that were previously owned? So like they're in auction um, or aftermarket? There was a couple of domains I had looked at. Um, that I wanted that were at an auction site. In fact, actually, I did own one. I, I did own or I do own. I, say, I don't remember anymore. I have a couple <laughs> of the domains that I wanted to get into with like um, RSS crawling that automatically 
uh, built WordPress pages based on RSS feeds. So I know you have a, a pretty good tutorial on that on your website that I'm, I have to go back and look through on how to do um, uh, automatic WordPress posts via PHP, yeah. which would really be a great resource on one of those sites. But yes, one of those I did grab from an auction site, but um, I think at this point I got something like 30 domain names under my belt right now. And right. not all of them are active and some of them I'm, I got set aside for future projects that have been cost me money for the last five years. So I have to make another decision yeah. on those. Um, but again, going back to having all those multiple domain names, um, my end goal, which was supposed to be finished last year, which again, with time being everything, um, I'm going to compress my W2 LIE site into monitorlongisland.com so that when somebody goes to monitor long Island, instead of there being a splash page there, it's going to be a full on community. And, um, that will make, um, you know, finding information, hopefully a little easier, hopefully a little, um, URL friendly. Cause that's working. It's on a WordPress site. I've got, I got built with WordPress, BB press, buddy press, and all the other, you know, stuff in there that makes it into a full on community, not just a WordPress site. Um, because the platform I'm running right now for my W2 LIE site has kind of been frozen in development for a while, I guess you could say. And when they finally did come out the version two, I tried to do an upgrade and it failed and I had to start over again. So I said, if I'm going to start all over again to get into version two of their web platform, I might as well just go right into WordPress, which I'm running right. for all my other, um, my other websites. So, um, yeah, it's no, that makes sense. all over the place. <laughs> that makes sense. So then shifting gears a bit then. So I would say you launched scanner school and like we uh, said there in the intro, it's an educational website dedicated to uh, instructing you know, scanner radio hobbyists via tutorials and podcasts. So, I mean, tell us a little bit, obviously I like, you know, in comparison of the .NET, no offense, but I do like the scannerschool.com. I mean, it just rolls off the tongue. It's easy to remember. And so now that you launched that site, have you noticed um, a difference between the two sites, your .NET versus the scannerschool.com? I, I, I have, it's just, it's a natural thing at this point. Everybody's got a dot com. I mean, um, uh, even, uh, what was one of the, the, the big travel sites, right? Even, even in their jingle, they really stress that dot com at the end of it. And, um, it, it does roll off the tongue a bit. That's kind of why I went with that, that name. I was very happy to see that it was available, that nobody had actually owned it. So, um, yeah, it, I think going with the dot com for anything going forward for myself is a wise idea, to be honest with you. Right. And so in terms of SEO, have you noticed, because obviously if you compare the two, I mean, it's kind of one of those things. I mean, obviously, hey, SEO, you do have to write content. But outside of that, just name to name comparison, have you noticed, you know, any SEO ranking differences between the two websites or? You know, not really. I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm, I'm kind of still not really understanding the analytical side of how to, how to look at all that stuff. So, right. uh, you know, I'm kind of looking to learn a little bit more from you, basically, yeah. both through your podcast and, and your blog, and, and really get into it. Because right now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of now, I, I just started Scanner School in January of 2018. So right now is a good time to really start learning again. You know, new shiny object. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, is, so is then how's it how's it been going so far i mean it's been going yeah it's been going very well um i had a really strong launch which which was really good um of course after the launch the the wave did not continue uh as strong as it was up front but again when you have something brand new and you bring a lot of people and you get that surge right, right? and then you kind of get the normal numbers afterwards so um i've got my spike on day one i got my spike um when I hit a, like a, a hit episode or, um, you know, something that's of high interest to somebody. And, um, but other than that, the numbers are going up, they are looking good. So I know that, um, I, I must be doing something right with SEO because I am hitting keywords. So when I listen, looks at, you know, scanner radio, uh, podcast, or, or when they look at something like the podcast that just came out with two weeks ago, as we're recording was a pain point for a lot of people. Uh, the technology that the scanner radio is using is something that I wouldn't say baffle a lot of people, but it was one of these things that it was, it was really was a pain point physically for a lot of people. They, they didn't like it. They didn't understand it, that kind of thing. So the last two episodes I did on that, my numbers are crazy. In fact, the lowest on my numbers 
are still higher than some of the highs I've seen just for those two weeks in those episodes. Wow. So, and I really went heavy on like SEO when I wrote that one. And the topic on that one was, um, it's called P25 and it's a digital type of modulation that's out there. And a lot of police departments and fire departments and county systems and state systems are rolling over from the old analog networks to these P25 networks. And that brings up issues with trunk, um, trunk radio, which a lot of people don't understand and, uh, encryption, which is the giant, um, you know, hot red poker in people's sides right now when it comes to scanner radio monitoring. So I really went heavy when I did, you know, my, um, my keywords and my Facebook posts on it, my Twitter posts on it that I really hit, you know, uh, you know, project 25 P 25 trunking on this week's episode or uh, the difference between phase one and phase two, or, you know, just a certain keywords I know people are looking for. So I don't know if it's just a combination of being on other podcasts and, and getting, visibility that way if it was i've also upped my game on social media the same week so like the one thing you're not supposed to do is do a lot of changes at once uh yeah i did that all in the same week (laughs) wow um i i don't know exactly (laughs) what was the change that made uh things so high but you know as we're recording right now uh i'm currently sitting in a good spot and again when i start going to other topics again uh we'll see if the numbers fall back into a normal trend or if this is the new norm. Right. And so uh, with your podcast, how many episodes are you in as of current day or right now in terms of the podcast? Uh, I have to record session 16 this today and it will oh, wow. go live on Tuesday. So I'm, um, you know, I just, like I said, I started uh, January 2nd with two episodes uh, for the first day, for the first launch and I've uh, been consistent every week prior. So yeah, this, this will be 16 so it's, uh, and roughly how many, I guess, downloads do you, do you have a, or rather, do you have that even available? So yeah, the last time I looked was, which was, and again, I'm not, I'm not a huge analytical guy. Um, I don't sit there and study numbers daily. I did take a look, uh, about three or four days ago. So I don't have end of week numbers. And of course I don't have the weekend numbers yet as we're recording this. Um, but I'm, um, I said I was 15, uh, 15 sessions published, I have over 3,500 downloads, so over 3,500 downloads, I guess, 23 countries. And uh, I mean, I've, I've definitely grabbed a couple of new countries in there in, the, in this past two weeks, which is great. And then the other thing is too, is um, I'm, I'm getting emails from these, from these new listeners saying that they're, they're happy that they caught on to the podcast, that they're going back and binging on them. And um, <laughs> you know, I try and keep them 20, 30 minutes because I'm very technical or I try and be technical enough where I'll teach somebody without having them fall asleep while driving on the way to work. (laughs) So I I try and keep, you know, the core content to about 20 minutes with maybe about 10 minutes of fluff on introduction or an advertisement or uh, teasers, you know, just to try and keep somebody from falling asleep on me. Cause it is, some of the stuff is very dry material, especially the early stuff when I was reading off of a script instead of reading off of bullet points. And um, you know, it's, but all in all the numbers, you know, they went up, they go down, they really went up. So, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell just how I'm working well with SEO, but, uh, I'll, I'll have to take some SEO courses. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, I mean, 16 episodes, 3,500 downloads that, and you know, that's the other thing that you have to consider is the niche. I mean, that those are amazing numbers in my opinion. Um, because like I said, you're, you're, you know, you gotta, you gotta look at your niche and the size of your niche and just what's going on now. Have you noticed in terms of you doing podcasts, uh, the tutorials, the reviews, has any scanner school.com traffic been pushed back? Have you noticed anything in terms of increased, uh, views or visits over to your previous, your amateur call sign W2LIE.net? I haven't noticed it go that way, but I have noticed it go the opposite way. So I know I am getting traffic from W2LA.net over to. Nice. So, because I have, again, I had a local following and a local, um, you know, was a local uh, source for some of that stuff. So, and again, my um, Facebook profiles, my Twitter profiles have, uh, have plenty of people on there as well. So getting people over to Scanner School has helped in that one. And also, um, I'm, I'm also in a couple of group me groups 
So I don't know if you know about that, but it's kind of like a um, yeah. That's where all the forums kind of went. That's kind of why they, they dropped, right? Because everybody's on their, their smartphones, and you got that real time chat. Correct. So that's kind of I know that's where my traffic had gone to because when those got really popular, the the um, the fire websites, the fire niche volunteer uh, sites I was telling you about earlier, they dried up and went away because they could no longer sustain themselves because of uh, the smartphone technology. People were just not going back to them. They, they couldn't even pay for hosting anymore. Wow. And, and they were making thousands of dollars a month. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really making anything a month except for a couple of, click, you know, affiliate clicks here and there. And uh, so, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm still around. And, um, uh, you know, and when you go and it's like when you say with the, with the niche, I'm still small fish, big pond. If I look at a couple of the Facebook groups that are out there and there's there's tons of Facebook groups out there for my niche. seems like everybody who wants to start one, right? Use Facebook. You can start a group if you want to. And there's just a lot of those with, with specific keywords. And what I did was I jumped into a couple of those groups, had been members of it, had made myself active in those groups, you know, the ones with thousands of people in them. And that's where I've kind of said that, you know, I'm, Hey, I'm, I'm doing a Facebook live session today. If you guys want to get on it, you know, I'm not going to announce this here anymore because I don't want to spam the group, but sign up, uh, join the event calendar and you'll be notified of future ones. So I know that I am gaining people on, on outside influences as well as, um, you know, just my own property. Wow. No, and I think, uh, you know, I look at it, especially with, I go back to your dot com scanner school dot com and I think you definitely set up well for for future success in terms of just slowly and steadily uh, gaining traction. Um, I mean, if anything is at this point to look at that is like that light, um, that shining light. I look at those your podcast numbers in terms of what you've been able to do just in sixteen episodes um, and the downloads, and hope that that you know increases. Um, as the months pass and those episodes are, you come out with new episodes. So now you mentioned, I know in our um, pre-interview session that you also do like, uh, I guess the the Facebook live where you just mentioned that as well. Um, So, I mean, explain a little bit about uh, doing that, I guess, Facebook live. Why, why go with Facebook live and why not host like a live session, maybe on scannerschool.com? I think it's easier to gain an audience where they live, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, people are kind of worried about Facebook and 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 the numbers and and you know whatever scandals may be out there because it's they're they're huge and they got fingers and everything, and that's kind of really why I gravitated again to going over there because somebody who's just passing on their stream will see that I'm live, and um, I know there's already an audience in there because of all the other groups for scanning that are out there. So what I did was, um, you know, I, I immediately opened up with a call to action. And, and again, I, I learned a lesson as this, 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 this week will be only my third Facebook live session. And the first week I did it, I did it in my scanner school group and it's a closed community. So when I did my call to action, I said, if you, Hey, you get any of you guys like this Facebook live session and you want to share it with anybody else that's in a group that you're, you know, that you're a member of hit that share button. There was no share button because <laughs> it, it was closed to the group. So what I've learned is if I go to my Facebook page and broadcast first, you don't need to be a member of Facebook to see it. You can just come in, um, in an incognito session. If you're that paranoid about it and you want to wear the tinfoil hat and, uh, <laughs> You can still go to, um, you know, the scanner school page, which I, if you don't mind, if I plug it, it's very easy to remember. I just redirect my URL, which is scannerschool.com slash Facebook. And now I'll take you right to our page. And again, if you don't like the page, you don't like the events, you don't have a Facebook account. You can still go to scannerschool.com slash Facebook, shameless plug number two, and um, you can still view the live Q and a session. You may not be able to ask a question, but you can at least, um, but there's visibility though. You get the visibility, you get the audience and you get that. So, um, I think that it's a good platform and, and Facebook right now from what I'm told. And again, I'm not a, I'm not an numerical guy when it comes to, you know, seeing how things are going right now. Uh, that's something that obviously I, I need to learn and I will be learning about, um, Facebook heavily promotes 
their live stuff and their video stuff. So instead of competing with all the other videos that are going on, you know, on YouTube, which again, I may get into because I know YouTube, I think from what I understand, YouTube has a better retention than Facebook because you have all those shiny little objects going on for somebody who's looking at something on Facebook. You may lose people. Um, but again, I look at the numbers after I've done recording and I repost it, I can see the wave and I can see, I'm gonna hold on to people pretty well for my 45 minute to an hour long session. So I'm happy about that. Um, but I think that just being discovered because people are naturally, you know, on Facebook anyway, uh, at least, you know, from what I'm seeing that, um, it, it has been a pretty good platform for me. So I've been, you know, working with that right now just to see how it plays and maybe you know a couple months down the road maybe i will try going over to youtube to see how that works or maybe i'll try bridging the two together and doing a youtube at the same time as facebook if that's even possible um but just to see how how things play and see where everything is so um yeah i can't really complain right now about the uh the facebook live platform wow well that's good that's good so then wrapping up uh obviously you you've had a quite a journey and you know we wish you definitely success moving forward. So if you had to do everything all over again, would you do anything different? Yeah, I would do a whole lot different. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're looking at the difference between 2005 and today, right? So we have, we have a couple of years difference. So besides everything that has changed um, technology wise, there's a lot of core things that haven't changed in, in all this time, right? Um, we, we can still learn that dot com is definitely the strongest domain name out there. I mean, there might be other ones out there if you're looking for something that's, um, uh, I mean, I did look into the, the, to the URL hacks and, uh, in fact, I even looked at taking my, my call sign W two L I E and hacking that with a just W two L and getting dot I E. But being that I'm not, um, uh, from Ireland, I can't do that. They kind of ah. closed that domain name and I, I'm really annoyed. They can't do that because that would have <laughs> been a really great short URL that I could have put out there. Right. Um, I still may write to them and see if it's possible. Maybe they'll be nice enough and, and let me do that. Or maybe one of your listeners has a pull <laughs> that, that, would, that can get me in over there. Exactly. Um, if, if you could, that would be great. But um, uh, yeah, so so some of the things I learned, yeah, definitely go.com. Um, definitely think about like we're talking about, and I know what you want to refer back to is, is radio marketing. So have it something that will stick into somebody's mind. So if instead of going W2LIE.net, maybe I would have saved that for a personal blog where I didn't really want too many people to go to naturally, but maybe I could have redirected them from a keyword friendly URL. So from like, maybe I would have gone to, I, like I have scanner, scanner rate, um, scan Long Island.com. I could have just used that for my domain name instead. In fact, I think that's the domain name I own. I don't even remember anymore. If not, I just keep putting on some traffic. Um, hey, or, or you better go and register it before this goes live. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Believe me, I have, I have a couple things on my list right here that I have to double check. Um, <laughs> but, but again, too, you know, like, so I have um, monitor long and that's now the business, right? So I want to get my traffic over and see what I'm up to. And of course, monitor I want to promote, um, the forums from W two L I E S. I want to share the same name. I want to be able to promote the podcast. I want to be able to promote the paging business. I want to be able to promote some of the other side projects that I have up and running. Like I own, um, long Island fire photos, because that was a very strong keyword that people were looking for. And that's just a base. That's just an RSS type of website where I just grab other people's smug mug photo content. And I feature them on my website. I don't earn any revenue on it. It's kind of just a service I put out there so that some of these other fire photographers can gain sales and kind of, kind of a way for me to keep a relationship going with the community I'm trying to serve. Um, but that's a very strong keyword URL that works very well for me as far as driving traffic. Um, so those kinds of lessons that I kind of am picking up on now, I really wish I knew out of the gate. And I really wish I had started with, with WordPress instead of going with E107, which at the time was one of the stronger web portals out there. Um, and I would have really gone strong in affiliate marketing um, instead of relying on Google ads because I got kicked off of them. And even to this day, it's been 10 plus years. I can't get back on them without opening up a second account, which violates their terms of services. So even though I called them directly and they told me to do that, um, 
you know, I, I, I'm kind of uncomfortable going that path. So I really would have been really strong in my affiliate marketing game out of the gate when it came to something like, um, you know, Amazon associates and whatnot. So that's kind of what I'm working on now as well with the, um, trying to make up for lost time and really trying to up my, my affiliate marketing game as well. So a lot of stuff that I am learning now. Um, now would you have gotten into programming, um, the scanners earlier? Um, even that one, I, that, that was one of those services where somebody came to me and says, Hey, I need my scanner program because I want to be able to listen to it. Like I have, like I posted online, uh, they want to be able to listen to their own radio in real time. So yeah, I think I would have promoted that up front, but, um, that's one of those things that, um, uh, it's weird. I probably would naturally would have gotten into that sooner than later. Um, but I think I got into it soon enough because it wasn't long before I put the website on before people were coming to me right. looking how their stuff program. Well, probably one of the other big mistakes I wouldn't have, I would have, um, stayed away from was taking ownership of stock of equipment. Um, about four years ago, one of the main scanner companies came out with a new radio and, uh, you know, being brand new to market supply was short. And I thought supply demand would be a good thing in my favor that I was able to source them. So I grabbed. 10 units of one type of radio and 10 units of another one. Though I could sell them really quick, you know, supply demand did not work out that well. <laughs> and that is a huge mistake that has still cost me money to this day. Wow. That, um, yeah, I mean, I put it on credit and then the interest rate was higher than what I was paying off because that's what I could afford at the time. So, um, zero percent interest rates are a great thing when you can find them. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's one of those things that, uh, again, you learn. So again, I would really stress affiliate marketing instead of taking ownership of inventory, even if you think you can sell it. Um, yeah, that, spending 10 grand on inventory that I ended up sitting on for a couple of months and eventually sold, uh, at a break even point at the end right. was really a tough, tough learning experience. And you may have, and who knows, you know, you may have, could have spent a fraction of that 10,000 or whatnot on, you know, you know, search marketing or content writers or advertisement placement. Um, yeah, I, I would have been, I would have been better off spending a 10th of it on Google ads to get me over to an affiliate site to sell the exact same radio. So, um, yeah, that, that's a strong lesson that I wish I knew then that I know now, but again, a lot of this stuff out there, man, it's just, you learn, you learn by experience right. and no matter what, you know, somebody can teach that, but until you got to write that check monthly, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you don't learn. <laughs> exactly. So then what would be your advice, you know, to someone, uh, with a desire to start a website about, a, a something that they're passionate about or interested in? You got to be consistent. That's the first thing. I mean, I, I run another website. I, I have, um, I have celiac disease. So I started a blog about my journey with celiac and, um, it's, uh, I won't plug it here, but it's, it's one of those things that I, I was publishing every once in a while. And I put it in the back burner and I publish again and, and put it in the back burner. So one thing is, is be consistent about it and just write and just put good content out there. And maybe nobody's going to watch it. Nobody's going to listen to it. Nobody's going to see it, but you're going to have content out there. And eventually that's going to bring in the search engines. And, and then when somebody finally does find your website, uh, because they're searching for whatever it is that you had happened to post, maybe six months prior, now they'll have the content there and you'll be able to, um, uh, at least get them hooked and hopefully onto your email list. And then you'll start having, uh, that kind of success. I mean, I mean they, that kind of website there is, I'm not really publishing. I have nobody on my email list there. So I don't want you to think that everything I'm doing, I have got the Midas touch on, <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of failures out there. There's a lot more failures in, in my portfolio than there are successes. And I think that's true for most people, but, right. um, I Indeed. would say, you got to be consistent. You got to, you just got to write, you got to, you know, keep going with whatever it is you're doing, YouTube videos or Facebook uh, posts or anything out there just to, to keep at it. And um, if it helps you, don't look at numbers, don't look at numbers, you know, don't let that, um, you know, uh, keep you from going forward. If, if they're not trending upwards or if there's, if they're going down or whatever else, it just means that the, the people aren't finding you right now, but they may come later on. Um, it's like that movie, right? If you build it, they will come. So, um, just keep, keep going along and keep swimming. Right. And so, so you mentioned that now, obviously curiosity got the best of me. I have to know what that domain name is in terms of that celiac disease website. It's called Mr. Celiac. It's mrceliac.com. Wow. 
So, and I, so I are like you that. journeying a bit of, I, I guess you're sharing a bit of your journey then. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I haven't posted since, uh, man, it's been months since my last post on there. And the post before that was months ago as well. But, um, part of, you know, me clearing my plate on, on some of these other projects that we talked about, you know, getting the, the, the dot com merge with the dot net and all that. Right. I'm hoping I can get over to the sea like stuff. And that was my goal there was to kind of, um, journey that, what I'm going through as far as diet wise, or as far as uh, how it affects my body, how it affects even like the projects I'm working on here. I have a bad day with my diet. It really affects and it clouds my mind. And I may not be able to get off the couch for a few days to get motivated to do anything. Wow. So that's kind of why I was hoping. It. And I know there's a lot of people that are in that boat and that's why I wanted to tap into that market, but that market saturated. You know, right. there's, there's a lot of people in there, but anybody I give that domain name out to, they all get a chuckle. Like, how did you get Mr. Celiac.com? And, um, you know, I just, it was available. <laughs> I, I just, one day just did a search for it and, uh, you know, go daddy had it. And for eight ninety nine, it was mine. Serendipitous so, timing. And that's, and I, again, it's one of those things too, that even if I wasn't going to do anything with the, with the domain name, just to go to some of the CELAC meetings or just to purchase things online, mm -hmm. I get people who say something to me right away. Or if I place an order, like that's a great domain name. So I'm like, yeah, well, if you want to buy it, you know, <laughs> <That'd be laughs> <a couple grand. laughs> that is funny. So then obviously last but not least here, um, is there anything that you'd like to share with our listeners or, you know, share in terms of your contact information, how they might contact you about, you know, what we've talked about or discussed? Sure. Um, you can always find me on my latest project website, which is um, scannerschool.com. So that's the one I'm going to, I'm going to push here. Cause that's, that's the newest thing I'm working on right now. And that's kind of what has my focus. Uh, so the website is scannerschool.com. And uh, that's the site where I plan on teaching everything that you did. You need to know about the scanner radio hobby. Uh, primarily right now it's podcasts. So you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google play or stitcher. And uh, eventually I'll have some videos on there and, and uh, a couple of blog posts on there as well. So I'm kind of hoping that it's a portal for other people to learn about scanning. Um, I guess from a point of somebody that is new to learning or there's other resources out there that, um, you know, they, they, when you, when you know nothing and, and you get into a community that knows a lot, sometimes they, um, you know, to say something bad about another community, but it's kind of hard to be the new person sometimes. So I'm trying to keep it that it's a school, it's an educational experience, and and everybody has the opportunity to learn about this hobby, and um, that's that's where I'm going with it. So um, again, the podcast, there will be videos, there will be tutorials, there will eventually be some courses on there as well, and also you can find me on Facebook at uh, ScannerSchool.com/slash/Facebook. We have a community group, which is open to anybody who has any interest in a scanning hobby at uh, scannerschool.com slash Facebook group. As you, as you can tell, I'm learning a lot about how to do SEOs when it comes to uh, the URLs. <laughs> yeah. um, and also we have uh, my Twitter, which I'm, I'm getting a lot more active on. I'm, I'm starting to really make the shift from Facebook to Twitter. I'm, I'm really liking the Twitter environment, finding that the reach out there is much better than it is on Facebook. So you can also find me at uh, scannerschool.com slash Twitter. And if you're looking to reach me, that will probably be the fastest way to get me right now because my phone, I just, I, I check it several times a day just for uh, Twitter mentions and, and whatnot. So, and if you don't mind too, I would like to offer something uh, for your listening audience. Oh, certainly. If anybody is looking to get into the scanning hobby, but is really unsure of where to go. I have a real short 30 page tutorial of five bullet points on uh, how to make the right purchase. So it's the five things that you need to know uh, before buying your very first scanner radio. And you can download that uh, PDF file by going to scannerschool.com slash kickstart. Perfect. Perfect. And so I hope the listeners uh, definitely take, um, take advantage of this opportunity. And so Phil, man, thank you again for joining us today and sharing your story about scanner stool, scanner school.com. Say that fast five times. And just your overall lessons learned about the importance of selecting a domain name that passes the radio test. So thank you, man. Oh, thanks for having me on. It's my pleasure. Most definitely. And thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. Last but not least, please subscribe to this podcast via Stitcher, iTunes, uh, Podbean, Google Play, however you choose to listen. In addition, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter by visiting kickstartcommerce.com. Thanks, and that's all for now.